My name is Alex Ward and over the next six minutes I'm going to explain why a four level laser is more efficient than a three level laser. There are three questions which I will pose. What is a laser? How can I make one? And finally, why is a four level laser more efficient than a three level laser? So, what is a laser? We all know what to expect from a laser, a very narrow and very bright beam of light. But how exactly does the light a laser produces differ from other sources of light? In essence, this difference has been boiled down to form the name laser, which stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. However, this obviously doesn't immediately explain everything. Firstly, the radiation is just more light. So let's forget that and say that a laser works through light amplification by stimulated emission. This gives us a better starting point for explaining just what a laser is. So, what is stimulated emission? In order to explain this, I will be using diagrams like this. A band diagram. We all know that atoms consist of a nucleus surrounded by electrons, and that electrons occupy bands which have specific energies. Here, bands are represented by horizontal lines. When a material is formed by billions of atoms of the same type, in close proximity to one another, these bands smear to form two regions, a lower, which electrons may stably occupy, and a higher, from which they will inevitably fall, losing energy as they do so. There are three processes a material can undergo which involve photons. Absorption, spontaneous emission, and stimulated emission. Using band diagrams, they look like this. During absorption, a photon is taken up by an atom, causing an electron to be promoted to a higher energy band. This is the process which is occurring when light falls on a surface and causes it to heat. During spontaneous emission, an electron falls from a higher energy band to a lower, and the atom emits a photon with energy equal to the amount of energy lost. This is the process by which light is produced in diodes and fluorescent lights. During stimulated emission, an electron falls to a lower energy band upon the atom taking up a photon, and the atom, in doing so, emits two photons with the same energy and direction as that of the incident photon. Given that this process begins with one photon and ends with two, we can see how it naturally lends itself to the amplification of light. However, there are some practical steps to be taken before we can exploit this. So, how can I make a laser? Let's start by forming my own two-level laser and stimulating it with a light source. I want to amplify this light, therefore I must induce stimulated emission. However, there are two possible processes, absorption and stimulated emission. Since absorption promotes electrons to the higher energy band and stimulated emission removes them from it, the amount of absorption and stimulated emission which occur depend on the relative population of these bands. If, as normal, the lower band has a larger population than the higher, absorption will dominate. If, somehow, we manage to create a larger population in the higher band than the lower, stimulated emission will dominate. This is called a population inversion. Now, returning to our two-level laser, we can see that, since there is a finite number of electrons, and our light source favours neither absorption neither nor stimulated emission, the best we could ever hope for is that the two bands have an equal population. As such, it is impossible to create a two-level laser in this fashion. Finally, we come around to the central question. Why is a four-level laser more efficient than a three-level laser? Let's first examine a three-level laser. Here, a photon pump is used to promote electrons to a high-energy, unstable state, from which they quickly drop into a metastable state. The electrons in this state will initially fall in a spontaneous emission process, but this light, combined within the laser, will later cause stimulated emission. Since the pumped photons have a different energy than those involved in lasing, the high energy used for lasing can be populated with electrons, causing a population inversion. A drawback of a three-level laser is that some of the lasing photons can still be absorbed even if this does not prevent lasing, it would be better if we could suppress this process altogether. The four-level laser represents this improvement. 
Here, the electrons which are involved in stimulated emission fall into another unstable state, then quickly transition to the ground state. This means that the lower band involved in stimulated emission is not the ground state and has a very low population, reducing the probability of lasing photons being absorbed. Hence, a four-level system wastes fewer photons and is more efficient than a three-level laser. Thank you for listening.